have you ever had a song on repeat and it's because you really like the song and end up going back to it in the future and at some point you catch yourself having put it on repeat and then you forgot that was the case because you're off doing something else you're you're concentrating on other things and there's some part of your mind that's being not exactly entertained but being out of the way of current conscious processes it's like there's a a kind of concentration that becomes possible once those um those parts of the mind are not useful for for that circumstance for that situation that's being concentrated on i used to liken this to something called pink noise but i did some some looking and it's it's something a little bit closer to gray noise the idea is that there is a kind of it's not like hypnotizing those parts of the mind as such but there is something that puts them out of the way that attracts those wandering parts of the mind um, to the music, to rainfall. That's, that's a really common one. And uh, I, for one, I really, really love rainfall. I can't stand, well, I can't stand hail, the sound of it. And I don't like thunder at all. And it's actually a little bit difficult to find good, I mean, thunder is common enough in nature that if you're recording rainfall for any significant amount of time, you're probably going to catch a little bit of thunder. And I find that extremely um, shocking. It'll snap me back into paying attention to the fact that there is that kind of stuff. Same thing with the rain on a, on a, a tin roof or something like that is, it's just something really jarring about that. But there's there's a kind of lumping of different ways to to amuse or entertain or distract or straitjacket or herd certain parts of the mind such that whatever is left even even whatever is left can daydream can daydream like i i pace around so when i pace i'll listen to music and i have a playlist of songs that i love and and I try to curate them to make them songs that I love and have a certain mood such that I can actually, um, you know, it's, it's happiness is infectious kind of stuff. So if you listen to certain kind of stuff, you can reinforce a mood. You, can, you pick up on certain moods in the music. And so it's, it's actually important that if you want to feel better, music is one way that you can actually kind of it's not like you're tricking yourself but you get to control what you reinforce you can make a conscious decision to not necessarily you know, feel better you know like internet adv advice feeling down have you tried feeling good it's like it's that's not how it works but it's possible to catch a little bit of the memory of feeling good while listening to the music and kind of borrow that from the history of your memory and and get it again so so I, i'll have a playlist going and that playlist will modify mood but it will also let the rest of me as i'm kind of meditating around in a circle pacing um it'll it'll let that other piece of me be creative in ways that i don't think i would be able to without that aid and i think the music is different than rainfall um i'm not really sure what's going on there but i do think that there is there are like little parts of one's mind splintered out that all have different concerns and the one that happens to be concerned about um wanting to accomplish something can be it's like having an audience stare at that part of the mind and some of those different other pieces of your mind are are bored of it or want to go do something else and so 
they're they're all pulling all in different directions or they're all just sitting there like looking and it's like a piece of your mind is judging the piece of your mind that's trying to accomplish things and so i can imagine that others would be almost nervous about about that kind of experience that kind of mindset so i know that some people they'll they'll go to they'll meditate they'll have some sort of practice that they'll that they'll go to and maybe that's a way of calming those those other let's say smaller distractions in the mind the audience members but i think that there is another way that is kind of like the opposite of meditation where those pieces of the mind are engaged with the things that they're interested in and they're encouraged and it isn't to like straight jacket them it isn't to gag them it's it's not to turn them so that they're all, not all looking and judging it's is to actually let them do what they like doing and i'm i'm not really sure what's going on with that but it's yet another practice that i've fallen into that seems to be encouraging more than creativity it's like rational creativity where i can think of of plot lines and associations between stuff that it's it's part of creativity but it's it's it is pacing around and just thinking as opposed to having a checklist and having processes and sitting down with a with a pen and paper and making graphs or flow charts or tables to associate different plot elements and different characters and stuff like that there's something a little bit looser that i can be encouraged to to pursue that will let me think about ideas in a less constrained manner without being so utterly unfettered that the imagination becomes useless so there's something something still floating and something still uh, exploring that is um, not anchored in the same way as sitting down and getting work done it's kind of like and it's the thing that i i go to when so I'll, I'll sit and i'll have my space and it's these are concepts i'll talk on in the future so i'll have my space i'll sit and i'll have my time and i will choose to not be distracted you know you put your phone on mute you tell the people that are around maybe you're living with others tell them when when this door is closed don't knock on it don't like i am unavailable for these hours of the day and you have to make it okay to not be on call so i would sit down i would have that time to do a thing and i would do the thing whatever it happens to be and then there would be these breaks when maybe i would notice that my attention is drifting and i'll just encourage it i'll stand up i'll leave everything as it is and i'll go but i'll bring a pen and paper with me that's very important and i'll go and i'll let my mind wander up i'll put on headphones and i'll pace around my kitchen or maybe i'll i'll walk to the store and get something or you know, and that might that process might take however long it takes and sometimes as i'm pacing around uh, the pieces of my mind that were working on that um that were getting frustrated or just like things weren't flowing very well they'll all they'll all loosen up um and I'll, that's why i would have pen and paper to write down keywords or whatnot so and it's a very daydreamy state such that if i don't write things down i will lose them and it's very much like falling asleep and so it is something that i need to to make a very i need to be very careful to keep that as a practice that i'm not embarrassed to have i mean wandering or if you live with other people wandering around and having a pen and paper like your you're a little bit mad like you you can't remember a few words because you're off in some la la land that can be kind of embarrassing and it's and maybe for some people if they're walking down the street and they have to pull out pencil and look they've got a little notepad or something like that and they've got to jot down notes and maybe it's because other people are so used to maybe tapping in notes into a into a smartphone or using it as a dictaphone those things i would 
I would avoid. I wouldn't recommend that kind of stuff. I've experimented with it because all that needs to be transcribed, listened back to, and that is much more difficult than just pulling out your pad and looking through it while you're at your computer, or while you're doing your writing, while while whatever, while you're you're back back in reality, back at task. Um, so I would I would be lost in something that matters get up when I feel fuzzy, go entertain those parts of my mind. And when I get the ideas, write them down. And sooner or later, I would get enough ideas that I just, okay, well, I mean, it, it was productive in my pacing around drinking a cup of tea or something like that, in, in that sense of floating. But once I've accomplished had getting some notes, dreaming a little bit, it, then it's time to come back and get back to to doing the work and it becomes very difficult and again i'll have to talk about the the uh the gardener and and the architect kind of mindset and there's a there's a reason why we like humans have these two the spectra that of personality traits of different personality traits that that influence how we would sit down and concentrate versus how we would go and relax um, so I, I would bounce between one and the other and the other and back, taking these specific kinds of breaks. And I think that when I'm taking a break and I'm specifically, I'm already lined up, like I've already got my favorite playlist and it's ready to go. Like I got my headphones right there so I can, I don't have to go and dig stuff up. I don't have to charge a battery. I don't have to go and find a playlist somewhere. I can just, it's right there. And and so that like i can go from doing my work to going and and the meditative practice of pacing and having tea the the ritual of relaxing taking notes coming back making those notes matter and then even if they're not really applicable to what i was currently working on it's write them somewhere and work for a while get up go do it again it's almost as though taking these breaks makes me more productive overall which is another thing that i'll have to talk about in the future so yeah um pieces of the mind that that love listening to rain um and that love being entertained by music i think i think it's the same kind of concept and i think it's like an an audience in the brain and instead of silencing them which i think is actually kind of like an abuse of your brain um, I haven't really thought about it that way, but I, I'll, I'll entertain that notion that it's it's somehow wrong, maybe even maybe even something like immoral for a person to quiet their mind when instead it can be encouraged to to go and and be childish, go and have fun, and I think I think it's possible to to know these things and to specifically set things up to to take advantage of that mood change take advantage of that location change that mindset change and maybe it's just me or maybe it's a certain kind of person i suspect that that that's the case but i wonder if there are other people i know there are other people that that like listening to music and they'll forget about it they'll have it on loop um but I wonder if it's only a certain kind of, of mind that really sees advantage in doing that, that maybe other people wouldn't, or maybe it's just a practice that other people haven't discovered on their own. Um, I don't know. <laughs>